I've got quite a little collection of thermal imaging cameras, but today we're going to have a look at a new one sent to me by Thermal Master. It's the P2 and their bold claim is that it's the world's second smallest thermal camera. Let's see what else it offers, what's the USP and how does it distinguish itself from quite a crowded market. Let's get out of the box, have a little play. Well, this certainly is unique. Is this designed for people who are using this all the time instead of a one-off little thing? Because it comes in this keychain box and it comes with a carabiner with it, which is quite nice. And the carabiner doesn't feel like the cheapest one in the world as well. There is the little camera module itself inside its little case. That's kind of cool. If you're using this um, regularly, you may find this very convenient instead of lugging around all of this stuff, boxes and cases and everything else. That's the one there. Let's install that. Thermal Master makes some bold claims about the P2, such as it's the world's second smallest thermal camera, and it does look very nice and compact. It talks about an X3 Super IR resolution, which apparently gives 50% 50, 50 better brightness and 50% better contrast. I'm not sure what that has to do with resolution, but we're gonna test that out. It has a 15 times zoom. I presume this is a digital zoom. Uh, I can't imagine there's any kind of optical zoom in this little module. And it says that it also has better temperature accuracy and lower power consumption compared to its competitors. So I'll be very interested to try this. Of course, I've got a few here that I can test this against and we can see if the claims stack up. Like nearly all of these thermal imaging cameras, I need to take my phone out of the case because the connector just doesn't reach far enough. Only one other camera has come with an extension so that I can keep my case on while I use it. You can have a look at the privacy policies at your leisure. Okay, well, we're having a look at the camera and at ourselves. Right, what we need to do to give this the best test is I need to get another smartphone and plug in one of these other devices. Maybe we use the top on as a little bit benchmark and we'll put them side by side. Okay, this is your side by side comparison. I've, on the left, I've got the top on TC001, and on the right hand side, I got the Thermal Master P2. And I'm going to give you a little walk around so you can see what kind of difference they display. The P2 does look a lot clearer on the screen. Whether it's any more useful, uh, I don't know, but it certainly looks clearer. Right, your famous deer, you're, you're, you're um, going to be online as My a. Hot <laughs> My wife is so hot. I just had a hot chocolate. Specifically, you're 35.6 degrees. Interesting. Well, a, you can see body temperature. you can see hot. that it's heating season now. The radiator's on. You can see that someone hasn't someone hasn't finished their hot chocolate. Kettle has been used. Let's go and look at some of the other stuff that I've already looked at in some of the previous videos. Radiator, even though. That radiator is only showing us 28 degrees, there or thereabouts, 27, 28 degrees. It's showing up very clearly. So the P2, I think, is showing the temperature variations a little bit easier. If you look at the cold spots of the dot and dab there, maybe that's easier to determine. Sun coming through the window. Let's have a look at the solar inverter. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to put these both in the uh, video editing software side by side to have a good comparison on the same screen. I don't know how much of this difference is down to the phone screen or if it's down to the camera modules themselves, but P2, the P2 is a bit smoother and less laggy. Can you see how the top don, like the refresh rate, it it seems to like jump around a little bit more than the P2. Hopefully that comes through when I put this into the editing software. Sun coming through the windows and the uh, radiators are on. That's, that's the only real thing you can see, even though it's not that warm. This goes to show uh, how heat pumps operate. If you're used to your radiators at 50, 55 degrees, you've got a wake up call. Cause ours are just sitting there at look, 27 degrees. 
It's probably going to be pretty consistent the whole way around. Good to see if your um, radiators need bleed in though. That nice big solid thermal. It's hard for me to hold the phones exactly the same, but the P2 definitely seems to have a distinct advantage. At least from what's displaying on the screen. Seems a bit clearer, a little bit smoother. And it does seem to work pretty well. Okay, well I think this is a, a pretty basic test, but what it goes to show is Thermal Master are, are basically claiming that their camera is better, smaller, cheaper. And I think on all of those cases, their claims are shown to be true. Obviously it's a lot smaller, obviously it's cheaper, you can find that by the price online, and it does seem to operate better. Um, is it worlds away? No, I think there's very little in it to tell them apart in operation, but it is an improvement. It is smoother in the refresh rate, and it certainly seems to distinguish between the temperature differences just that little bit better than the um, topped on TC001 does. I'm sure you'd be happy with either of these, but if it was my money, I would certainly buy the Thermal Master P2. I think the topped on is now just a little bit out outdated, last generation, and the Thermal Master seems to be outdated. It comes with better packaging, comes with that nice little carabiner case that we saw. And so overall, the Thermal Master wins this round.